Hey everybody, welcome to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. I'm joined by Tyler. How you doing, hey. Tyler? How was doing your Doing good. And we took a week off. Um, it, it's been so long. It's been like two whole weeks. How was your mm-hmm. holiday? Did you have a good holiday? I did. I had a lot of fun on July 4th, and uh, I, got, I got to see some friends that, well, I do see them like semi-often, but I, I got to see see them all again, which was great. It was all, all around just a great holiday. How about you? Cool. You know, I stayed home. I watched fireworks on television. That's it what turns, it's all about. It turns out I'm like 90 years old, but... <laughs> After a certain point, I mean, I can understand going to see fireworks if you have, like, children or whatever, but for me, personally, I would much rather watch them on TV, where I'm not out in the mosquitoes, I don't have to breathe in the smoke, and um, there's a lazy boy in the, the in the living room. I can sit there, I don't have to get, I don't have to sit on the hood, or worry about if I'm denting the hood, or if I, you know, I, I don't have to worry about pulling out a lawn chair that I, you know, is going to be completely uncomfortable, so, yeah, I watched on TV. We watched the PBS and then we watched the Macy ones. It was it was good. Um, Do you not live in a subdivision? No, dude. We live out in the fucking boondocks. Ah, okay. Uh, we live in, yeah. like, like, there's farms and cows and shit. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So. Like, I, I live out in the boondocks, but it's like we're in a subdivision. Like, like in the... We're in a super small town. Ridiculously small town. And we live in, like, one of the main subdivisions. Mm. The amount of people shooting off fire... Like, we had like 17 families all around us all shooting off fireworks. It's like, couldn't you all have all pitched in and just done one fireworks show for the entire neighborhood? <laughs> yeah, uh, see, so we live, we live in Portland. It's a, a town of about 3,000 people. But we live outside of that. So we, we don't have, I, I, I probably just dox myself. <laughs> like I live in, you don't know what state, it's okay. There's a tons of, uh, but anyways, all you have to do is look up one that has Population of three thousand. All right. <laughs> it uh, anyway, well, I mean, if I if I gave away the name of my town, there's no way somebody couldn't find it. It'd be too easy. <laughs> there's only one town named what I like the town that I live in. Okay. Yeah, we don't. I probably have to beep out my town. <laughs> probably shouldn't do that. Uh, all right. Uh, just go ahead, dox yourself. There can be nothing bad that happens from that. All right. Well, all right. Let, let me tell you a story. When I first started the channel, somebody asked for my dot files. So I was like, you know what? Fine. I'll upload my dot files, like the whole dot config file, right up to GitHub. And I was like, oh, there's nothing could possibly go wrong. But did you know, like, I love Bitwarden, but Bitwarden shares, has a file in dot config that has all of their, like, uh, API keys and stuff like that in plain fucking text in dot no. config. Yeah. Swear to God. Uh, and, and I was like, and I had no clue until somebody signed into my, like, google account with my google password yeah so i ended up having to go through and change all the api keys get that fucking thing off and uh yeah it, it's truly dumb i don't uh, it's like <laughs> so don't, don't don't upload your whole dot config file up to github because there's shit in there that uh you know you definitely don't want to share um I, I i am pretty sure i've solved the problem though but that's definitely not something you want to do uh, and I don't understand why Get or Bitwarden would sh- save that stuff like that. I mean, I, I don't even know really. I mean, those two events could have been unconnected because I mean, I don't know if those numbers in there were actually anything that they could have used. But it it just was a big fucking coincidence that I shared that on GitHub, and then a few days later, you know, shit started getting stolen. Uh, I yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> what did you do on Linux? This is going to be the whole show. We're it's going to be 6 o'clock tonight. We still won't have gotten to the main topic because I swear to God, neither Tyler or I even know what the fucking main topic is. <laughs> like, we don't know. As soon as you said that, I'm like, shit, I really don't know. Uh, I'm going to have to go look because really, I'm pretty sure it has something to do with using Windows. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be surprised once. Uh, and, and the fun, all right, so the, the main topic for today is would you use Windows willingly if it was FOSS? So that's the... That's the main topic, but yes. That's a good topic. <laughs> it is a good topic, seeing how you're using Windows right now, you jackass. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was just about to say. All right. So, so what I've been doing on Linux yeah. <laughs> is ridiculous. I have been switching around like crazy. I made a video talking about the fact that I was talked into trying Gen 2 again, uh, and then I got really upset because after Gen 2 just... I. CH rooted into my install, and then my make.conf files for 
doing everything, just gone. And then I remade it, and still, it was like I didn't have a make.com file. So I was like, okay, whatever, try Debian. Debian, all their download links just wouldn't function on any computer inside of my house uh, and on my 4G phone. So, like, it was def- definitely Debian's site was just, like, the download links weren't working for some reason. It was fixed shortly after that. Everybody was telling me, like, hey, uh, it's fixed. But, anywho, then I went back to Arch, started having problems on Arch where, like, I installed the new Linux kernel and all my issues with my graphics card crashing and the audio um, device like the internal audio device not being detected that got solved. And then the problems just creep back up the next day. So then I decided, all right, well, Debian's links are working. I'm going to try Debian and just see if I can uh, like use a tool on Debian and just, I'll pull down the mainline kernel and just try it on Debian. Maybe that'll change something. Heck, I'll just try it. That didn't fix anything. And so now I am reluctantly using Windows just just to be able to get stuff done for right now. I don't know what I'm going to do. I might I might even go crazy again and try another Gen 2 install. But I, I really have no idea what I'm going to do with Linux for the next week. No idea. <laughs> well, I, I feel your pain. Uh, we all know how my experience with Gen 2 went. Uh, I have no clue what's going on with, with Debian. Uh, it, when you made that video, I tried it and it was working fine for me. So it's possible just at that point their website was down or something. Who knows? Uh, I, for, for me, this last week in terms of Linux, I've also been all over the place, but I haven't distro hopped, so I should be happy. Uh, I actually went through and re-rice DWM, so I'm now on a purple, black, and white theme from where I was. I'm not completely done with it. I'm going to finish it Sunday night on the stream, but, um, yeah, it, it looks nice. I, I think, I think given what you were talking about with your, your problems with Discord, that the problems that I was having with Discord yesterday are a Discord problem and not a distribution problem, which I'm so thankful for because that means I don't have to go hop to another distro. So <laughs> yep. that just means that Discord has is having some problems. And, and like I said, that's good. Um, I mean, not good that Discord's. It just means that I don't have to worry about my computer exploding, which is good. <laughs> um, so... Like I said, I've raised DWM. I've also been working on making them better for writing. I haven't made a lot of progress on that yet. Uh, I've been mostly doing some research in terms of finding some plugins that will do good because I want to... So, uh, for a living, I I write historical papers and stuff like that. So, uh, I want to move away from having to use Google Docs and using LibreOffice to being able to use Vim. And I know a lot of people have pointed me towards, like, LaTeX and all that kind of stuff, but I don't really care about the formatting and stuff like that. I actually want to be able to write in Vim and make it look easy, but mm-hmm. Vim has always had, like, the weirdest-ass text wrapping ever, so I'm trying to figure out how I can go mm-hmm. through and fix that and stuff like that, because it's not great. Like, I don't want, when you get to an end of a line, I don't want it to, st- you know, like, split the word. I want it to actually move the word to the next line, you know, instead of splitting the word midway or whatever, and it looks dumb. Uh, and, and it could be worse. It could be like Nano, and Nano, Nano doesn't have wrapping at all. It just continues on forever and ever and ever, ever. Like I mean, you can turn wrapping on in Nano, but uh, why would you? I mean, just use Vim. Um, exactly. But, so yeah, th- those are the two things I've been having. I've been doing. Um, I've also been floating in and out of the other window managers because, like, like I talked about last time. When I installed this version of Arco, I went through and installed, like, all the window managers. <laughs> like, I have <laughs> all of them installed. And uh, I've just been flopping in. Like, I went into Xmonad again. I got my rice set up back in there. I immediately left Xmonad because I realized how terrible Xmonad is. Uh, I've gone into Qtile and Herbstluff, and I was trying out Spectre WM for the first time. That's really good. Mm-hmm. Um, and another thing I've noticed... And here, here's a free piece of advice for everybody. If you're not going to use KDE Plasma, don't install KDE Plasma, okay? Because <laughs> KDE, ins- I mean, I love I love KDE to death. It's just, it's a fantastic desktop environment. But it installs so much shit. I mean, if if I open, I, like, all right, so I'm going to, you can you won't be able to see this, Tyler, but I'm going to show everybody else. Mm-hmm. If you open up Rofi on my computer and type in the letter K, you could go on for pages and pages and pages. If like 
just seeing all the shit that KDE installed. So I'm just going to read some of this shit. Um, let's see. K-Address Book, Kajong, K-Alarm, K-Algebra, K-Algebra Mobile, Kazant, Calcium, whatever the fuck that is. That's Periodic Table of Elements. K Kamoso, Canagram, Capman, that's Pac-Man clone. Uh, K-App Template, Kate, Katomic, K-Backup, k Back, black box k, k blocks that's just one page that's with one page on rofi it's it's the dumbest thing ever so what i'm what i am hearing is that kde is not bloated whatsoever <laughs> no not no not whatsoever like I, and that's just i mean i understand this probably uh the arco because i installed it from the arco and installed it right so our Arco Linux probably just has all this stuff installed for people who want to use, you know, Plasma. And that's perfectly fine. Like, like I said, Plasma is a great desktop environment. But don't install it unless you're going to use it because I have no intentions of actually using it. I just installed it because, you know, every once in a while I'll, I'll think about, you know, let's go have some fun in Plasma. But that's not a great use case for Plasma when it also installs a thousand packages on your system. No. It's so uh, yeah, I, I, that was going to be my next question is do you even know how many packages are on your system? Uh, almost 3,000. Holy. Yeah. I think I think that's what it was. Um, oh no, excuse me, it's just over 2,000, 2119. <sighs> still. Uh, yeah, it's still it's a lot. Now, now you got to remember I, I uh, sorry, I, I listed these out last week, but I have a uh, Awesome, Herbstluff, Spectre, Qtile, BSPWM, DWM, XFC, Plasma, uh, Xmonad, uh, Openbox. I'm pretty sure there's one or two others. Those are all the ones I have installed. So for, if you take that into account, 2000 isn't all that bad. <laughs> yeah, especially considering that includes all of the actual programs and dependencies that you need for yeah. everything that you use on. Yeah, yeah. yeah so I, I don't know. It's not... If I were to go through it and reinstall, I would definitely... I'd install the window managers again, because I like going back and you know switching between those, but I would not install Plasma. Just because it's not one that uh, I'm ever going to use all that much, so that was that was a mistake. But other than that, I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> it's one of those things, like, it's not as if it hurts anything. It's just that when I try to search for something that, like, in... in Rofi that starts with a K that's not a plasma thing. Like, and then I have to go through all these K apps. So dumb. <laughs> like, first of all, plasma, I understand the whole K thing was like a, uh, it, it was a thing back in the, you know, 2000s when you first started out or the 1990s when you first started out. I, it's old. Okay. We need some new names. <laughs> it's dumb. Okay. So, <laughs> well, what are we? We're 16 minutes in. Getting, uh, that, believe it or not, last week it was like, what, 30 minutes in before we got to the contact information? So, oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. <laughs> so we're doing good. We're doing good. All right. If you want to get in contact with us, you can do so at the Linux Cast on Twitter. You can subscribe to me. You can subscribe to me. You can subscribe <laughs> to all the audio stuff at the linuxcast.org. I, I continue to promise that eventually that will be a website. It still is not. Uh, at this point... Just assume that that's an empty, broken promise. It will eventually happen, but it's not going to happen anytime soon. Uh, you can contact us via email at email at the linuxcast.org. I did do that. So that's something that I'm going to hang my hat on for quite a while. Like, like you, you fuckers wanted a website. I got you an email. Isn't that enough? <laughs> it's so dumb. Anyways, you can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can subscribe to Tyler's channel. He's official zany on odyssey and zany on youtube the links will be in the video description below you can subscribe to the linux cast on youtube at youtube.com slash linux cast we just went over 3300 subscribers which is that's more awesome than I, I ever thought i'd ask <laughs> like i guess it's uh, the, uh, the last three days have actually been the best i've had on the channel they were organic not dt related um mm -hmm. so th those are i was really impressed because i did the the, the uh, audacity video did really well and the mm -hmm. the Windows 11 video did really well, so um, I'm I'm really happy. That's with, awesome. Yeah, I'm really happy the way the, the channel's going, and I continued to be shocked. Any watches? Anyone watches this shit? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> thank you for watching. We really do appreciate it. Um, I mean, you make good videos, dude. I gotta be honest. I, you, uh, you do. You do. I, I'm glad everybody else thinks so because I think that they're all crap. <laughs> now, now that um one that I did um yesterday on support, Linux supporting the noobs. I really like that mm -hmm. because I didn't have to edit that hardly at all because 
I don't think I said the word um a single time. Mm-hmm. That's something I have to, I'm trying to work on and get good at. I, I'm not good at even it. focusing on it. Like even if I make it like a, a mental note throughout, like throughout trying to record, don't do that. I, it, yeah. it's hard. See, I took, yeah. I, I took a class actually when I started the channel cause I wanted to, cause I have a lot of filler. I have filler at words that I use all the time. So um is one of them. You know, is when I'm like, what am I, a 14 year old girl? Like, you know, you know, <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like, like I, I swear to God, I use, you know, all the time. It's, it's so dumb. Uh, the, there, there's a few other ones that I just, uh, they're filler words, right? So the way they teach you to do it is to learn to replace those filler words. Cause basically those words are for you because you're trying to think of what to say next. Right. So what mm-hmm. they try to train you to do is just to stop talking. Like when mm-hmm. you when you don't know what to say something, you just silence, and it's much easier to edit out silence than it is to say. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, uh, uh, unfortunately, in the podcast here, I don't edit out any of the ums. I mean, in fact, I don't edit mm-hmm. the podcast at all, other than making it sound a little bit better. Uh, everything you hear us t- say, other than the pre-show, which we don't include. Uh, mm-hmm. You actually hear, so uh, yeah. you get the swear Which word. That one, I think it, I, I think it makes it more natural. Um, oh, yeah, it's a dis- like it's, that. <laughs> it's a discussion, you know. I mean, it's not. I could, I could go through and, and and do it, but then you know, it, it's it'd be weird. Anyways, mm. those are the contact information. So every week, we choose news links of the week, things, whatever. Uh, we each choose one. Tyler, what was your news link of the week? For uh, for me, it was a nine to five uh, Linux article about uh, Next Cloud Hub twenty two coming out, um, which uh, it's coming out with a whole bunch of like improvements and new features for like Teams, um, just just making it even and even more fully featured and fully functional um, system for large teams, which I think is great. But in reading the article. Um, Quite a ways down, there's uh, they talk about um, among the other noteworthy changes. One of them is integrated zip file compression inside of the the Nextcloud you know file manager, which I think that that one is. I was looking at that. I'm like, that's really like for me that will actually be handy to have. I do use Nextcloud, and so ha- being able to just manage my zip files, not not even having to extract them or decompress them when I get them down to my machine is yeah, that's pretty nice or just compress them in the in the cloud just because that's yeah it's pretty neat um next cloud is one of those things that I look at and think you know what Matt you should definitely use that um mm-hmm. but but like the Linux cast website that's probably never gonna happen either <laughs> <laughs> like I had I, I went and got I signed up for Linode and have like the hundred dollar credit you get for like two months or whatever um I have done nothing with it. Like I was going to use it for the website. I was going to try Nextcloud. Um, I've just been astonishingly lazy since, since the like three three or four weeks ago when I started having Linux problems. You mm. know, uh, I haven't been interested in doing anything new. It it, it 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 was very hard for me this week to find an app of the week because mm-hmm. I haven't tried anything new other than I mean, I, like I I've done. I had five new apps for the the monthly top five apps thing that I do every month. I have mm-hmm. those. And I didn't want to use one of those, but other than that, I haven't tried anything new. So this next cloud thing is definitely going to be something that I want to look in because every time somebody talks about next cloud, it's like, you know, they have like an office suite. They do email, they have chat, they have all this, you know, file mm-hmm. stuff. Like this sounds really cool. It sounds like something I should definitely try out, but I never, you know, actually do. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things where it, it is good, but I mean, I, I'm glad you said it. Like when you're having troubles, um, the last thing that you're going to do is try something new or just fiddle around with something. You just want to get stuff to work. Like that's really all it is. Yeah, I, I, see, the thing is I was, I was going through, it was like one problem right after another. And I, I, I'm at the point where I think I got things running right now. So I'm babying my computer, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, mm-hmm. it, it, it's like you fall down and you hurt your knee and you're, you, you know, you've gone through the healing process you're really careful there for a while because yeah, you yeah. don't want to have to go through that shit again. Um, mm-hmm, so that mm-hmm. that's where I am at right now. Like, I don't know if I want to, I'm, 
granted, I was still a dumbass and installed all these window managers, so I mean, I can't really say I was that much. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's dumb. All right. Um, yeah, so this looks really, really interesting. I'm definitely going to have to check it out because next color just seems to keep getting better. All right, so my mm -hmm. app of the week, and I don't know if you had a chance to take a look at this video, but um, so mm -mm. for those of you guys who don't know, Ubuntu 21, 20, was it, tw it was 2010. Came, no, it was 21.04. Okay, so 21.04 mm -hmm. came out around the same time GNOME 40 did. And uh, for that reason, Ubuntu didn't go through and actually implement anything from GNOME 40 other than like a few applications. And we were all kind of waiting to trying to figure out exactly how Ubuntu was going to implement any of the stuff that GNOME 40 did because GNOME 40 it has a significant change in terms of UI than previous versions of GNOME. And it turns out Ubuntu's not going to do anything. Uh, <laughs> like they, this video, it, 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 the link will be for all this stuff in the video description, but if you want to see, OMG Ubuntu has a video of GNOME 40 running in Ubuntu 21.10, which comes out this fall. And basically what it is, is Ubuntu with uh, the uh, multitasking of GNOME 40. That's it. See, when I was talking about 21.10 in a video I made earlier, uh, a couple months ago now, uh, I said something like, to, along, along the lines of, I really hope Ubuntu takes this opportunity for a visual refresh, something that looks different. Uh, mm -hmm. Because Ubuntu has looked the same since Unity was released. It looks exactly the same. I mean, they put some new coats of paint on it, but it's the same format and layout they've, they've had for at least 15 years, 10 years, whatever. Mm -hmm. A long time. So I was really hoping that they'd... Now, I understand. Every time I say something like, I really hope a major distribution would make a major change, somebody in the comments is going to be like, <laughs> uh, you just want change for change's sake. Like, that's true. Yes. I, mm -hmm. I, I, I like change. I like it when people put effort into stuff. And like, I'm not saying that Ubuntu doesn't put effort into Ubuntu. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure they do. And, and Ubuntu is great. It's gotten better. The, they've, they've made Gnome usable, you know? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I would just like to see them do something. Yeah. Different. I, and I, I think you're 100% right, and I don't think it's accurate to say you want change for change's sake. It's okay to want change after, like, seven years. It, it It's okay. Like, you know, it, it's good to have something be the same for a period of time, but there there comes a point, especially when it comes to UI and, exact, like, how stuff looks, it's not good to just ignore an update because it it's okay. Like that, that's the whole reason like that people are complaining w so much around audacity and it's buyout. It's even more than all the other stuff that's going on with it. It's a, everyone just wants a UI update. Why, why are we getting other changes than what everyone has agreed audacity need? Like there's so many different UI programs and just things, uh, not necessarily FOSS community, but in general, that just get ignored when it comes to their UI. They improve it functionality-wise, but yeah. UI stays the same. Well, it's um, like, uh, I mean, you can really name the ones that are have been stayed the same for the longest time. So, like, yeah, you named Audacity, Ubuntu, LibreOffice is, is in the exact same spot. Mm -hmm. I made, I made, a, like, I, like I made a video about that like two or three weeks ago. And in the comments there, I was like, why do you want this to change? It works. You know, like, that, you know that's true, and and my argument yeah. with LibreOffice was, it's not that I want them to change radically. I just want them to show interest in the project. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. the way it, for at least with LibreOffice, it makes it seem that they are resting on their laurels. It makes it seem like they're mm -hmm. so interested in maintaining the status quo that it still looks and feels and works the same as it did 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Stability and, you know, just being able to work and do what it needs to do is perfectly fine. But at a certain point, it makes you f makes people feel like the developers aren't actually interested in, you know, in their project at all. Now, I don't think that that's the case with Ubuntu. Ubuntu has made a lot of other changes over the years, you know, in the last few years that show that they're perfectly interested in Ubuntu. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't even think that we need, in terms of you know, a UI refresh, a, a complete revamp. Just 
uh, some new features that would make it stand out just a little bit more from where it was, you know, a few years ago. Like uh, mm -hmm. the ability to uh, revamp the settings. So, like, uh, Papa West has gone through and, and put in yes. uh, a lot of the GNOME tweak stuff into their settings app. Like, they've taken mm -hmm. a lot of the GNOME tweak stuff that you'd have to use in GNOME Tweaks and put it in their settings app, mostly theming and stuff like that. It's mm -hmm. great, right? It, it's mm -hmm. exactly what it should be. Uh, yep. Why do, I mean, Ubuntu's working on that a little bit. Like, they've added the ability to change the dark and light theme in the theme. Go through and revamp the themes or the settings uh, application so that you can do more in terms of customization. M move. It's obvious, it's obvious that they're not going to follow GNOME uh, mm -hmm. In terms of actually a full re UI refresh and and actually going through and just stealing out pieces of GNOME 40 mm -hmm. makes you look lazy, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. Like let's let's just just take these little pieces out or whatever and and put them on our car and see. You know, it's like it's like a it's like rolling around in a 1997 Chevrolet Beretta with spinners in the you know in wheels. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, it, it, it just you know what? It, it's obviously like I said, it's obvious Ubuntu does not want to follow GNOME. So go do your own thing. You have GNOME. You obviously don't care for what GNOME is doing. Find ways of distancing yourself and making yourself your own desktop environment because you want to. I didn't care for Unity, but I never had a complaint about Unity because it felt like it was theirs. You know what I mean? Yeah, it All, was unique. Yeah, it, it, it was. Yeah, exactly. It was unique. Uh, mm -hmm. This just feels like they're uh, slowly. I mean, they chose GNOME, and then they've tried desperately to just maintain what Unity looked like. And mm -hmm. but there's like integrating some GNOME features. It's very. It's a very weird, fractured. You know. No. Way it, 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 even though I know this is not true, but the perception is that they're lazy. Like, and I know that's not true, but it is, it seems like laziness because they like, well, we take a foundation and like, ex especially from the picture that I'm seeing here, it just seems like all they do is remove the new bits to maintain the old look or at yeah. least a similar old look. You know that. I mean, yeah, it, it does look different, but it's like, it's only because it's GNOME forty. Yeah, I haven't used Ubuntu twenty one to ten yet. I guess they have the daily downloads or whatever. I'm, I haven't tried. it. I'm gonna wait till the beta to do anything like a video or anything. But it just feels from the video that I watched, and I showed this on stream just a minute ago. Um, that it just looks like they've tacked it on, right? It feels mm -hmm. the multitasking and the window and workspace and stuff feels tacked on and honestly that just uh, it just doesn't feel great and i'm gonna like i said i haven't used it yet so i'm very much judging this based on a youtube video and, mm -hmm. and yeah. then, you know but so I, I will wait for a final judgment until i actually try it but like i said from that video the multitasking stuff feels tacked on and that just makes me feel not so good about ubuntu just because if you really didn't want that kind of stuff that, to the point where you just, you know, you, know, you guys wanted this, you have it, uh, you know, mm -hmm. do your own thing, you know, uh, maintain the the way the task switcher was before or come up with something different. Do something. I don't know. We bitched about GNOME for an hour and a half last time, so we really don't <laughs> need to continue to, to bitch about GNOME. Uh, that doesn't seem, True. you know, that doesn't need to be the thing that we do that we become known for, but. Um, still, I don't like Ubuntu is good. It's 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 a good distribution, and you know, if anybody came up to me and say, "Hey, what Linux distribution should I use?" There's a fifty fifty chance I'd say, you know, Ubuntu or Papa West. You know, I was like, those, mm -hmm. those, two, those are the two that I'd point to, and which one you choose really depends on whether what your stance is on corporate, you know, backing, and uh, mm -hmm. even then they're both and then backed. also mainly like, do you play games? Because if you play games, just install Pop. It'll just be easier to just install Steam, and yeah. you don't everything's going to just be set up and better optimized for gaming. So yeah, like I mean, yeah, P Ubuntu is, and GNOME is one of those things where like you can complain, but I understand why Canonical is not going to jump on the idea of making their own desktop environment again. 
they didn't get a lot of community support or anything yeah. when they were doing it. So, well, that the all right. I'm gonna say this with a lot of love because I don't want to bash the people who use Ubuntu, but the Ubuntu community is very. It's not just the Ubuntu community. Every every Linux community, and we were all insular in terms of what distro we use. We all have the things that we like, and we want them to stay the same. The, uh, the Ubuntu community loves the way Ubuntu looks. They like mm-hmm. the color scheme. They like the way that it's laid out. And do you want to know what? I'm not an Ubuntu user, so it's perfectly fine for me to sit here in my chair and say, "You want that looks ugly. You should change it." Um, mm-hmm. You know, that's me. <laughs> you know, exactly. A that's why, your opinion. Right, it, there's a reason why I don't use Ubuntu, and that's what good great about Linux. So if you're an Ubuntu user and you like the way Ubuntu looks, you probably don't think that they need to change at all, and you probably think that they're. The way they're implementing GNOME 40 is perfectly fine. You're kind of looking forward to it. It's kind of exciting. For me, I, mm-hmm. I look at that and see um, I'm still not going to use Ubuntu. <laughs> you know, it's the, yeah, the, yeah. Like, the reason why I want them to change is because if they made a change, I might go say, you want, I want to use Ubuntu again. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, the way they're going, uh, that's not going to change my opinion. And that's the reason why I want them to change. So it, it, when all said and done, it's, uh, it's a me problem. So... Um, <laughs> I'm going to continue to use Arch-based distributions probably for a long time. Although, when I thought Discord was freezing and, and I was having computer problems, I was like, you know what? I'm going to install Debian. <laughs> <laughs> you started thinking of leaving. You're like, Ugh. Like, every time there's, a, there's just this little bitty problem that I don't think I'm going to be able to solve, I think about mm-hmm. distro hopping. Uh, mm-hmm. And I know that's not, the, like, that's not the way to use Linux. Like, mm-hmm. like you really should yeah. go through and try to troubleshoot and fix things. But mm-hmm. sometimes you just, like... I don't want to do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna hop. So take it from someone who's hopping between distros. It's never a good idea. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, well and then you just end up using Windows. <laughs> yeah. All right. Speaking of Windows, main, main topic. topic for this, yeah, the main topic for this week is: Would you use Windows as your daily driver? Not being forced to like Tyler is, but if it, would you choose to use Windows if it was open source? Uh. I'm, seeing as how this was your topic, Tyler, I'm going to let you go first. What's your answer to this question? Um, no, not and, and not because uh, I like not because of some philosophical reason, but I just don't trust Microsoft. Mm-hmm. Like even if it went FOSS, like I don't trust Microsoft at all, and it would t- it would literally take at least four to five people who are like okay, I'm a data scientist. Like I my like I know what I'm doing and I go through code and I've, I've all of us have together spent, you know, the past month going through and it's okay. At that point, I might try it. I probably wouldn't stick on it because I don't trust them to even in that scenario where it's guaranteed had a team of people go over it and there's nothing malicious going on. I, I don't trust it to stay that way. Mm. What about you? Would you use it? Okay, so I think that this is going to be one of those ones where it depends. So I'm very much like mm. you. I don't trust Microsoft. And if Microsoft decided to open source Windows but maintain control over it, then no. Because we know what that we know what that looks like. It's called Chromium. Like, Google owns Chromium. It may be open source, mm-hmm. but Google makes all of the decisions in Chromium. I mean, mm-hmm. Microsoft's a part of the board and they contribute to the project or whatever, but don't be fooled. Chromium is a Google project, okay? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same thing with, like, Flutter. Flutter is open source. It's a programming language, right? It's mm-hmm. And it's been worked on by Canonical and the boys at Ubuntu. Boys and girls at Ubuntu. Uh, you know, it's, uh, you know... So, but it's still it's a Google project. It was started at Google. They have the vast majority of control over that and Chromium and every open source that they have. Same thing, Android. That may be an open mm-hmm. source project, but it is a Google project. So, mm-hmm. uh, if Google you... stopped developing those projects, I don't think we would see any. I mean, yes, there would still be some development on it, but nowhere near the level that it's at now. Right. So. Um, by the way, we said Google and my phone decided to say, hey, how you doing? Oh, by the way, I'm listening. <laughs> by, by the way, yeah, by the way, I'm listening to everything. But we're open source. It's going to be good. It's great. You love yeah. it, right? <laughs> it's so, it, uh, so, so my answer is, 
is it depends because if Microsoft didn't have um, control over the product, which they, I mean they would, uh, then mm-hmm. yeah. maybe I'd try it out in a virtual machine where they couldn't have access to any of my data. You know, um, <laughs> I think the. So really, I guess my answer is no, because I mean, it, mm-hmm. there's no way they're going to not only open source it, but also give up complete control over it and actually have a community developed. At this point, Windows is what it is. It's always going to be Microsoft mm-hmm. developed. Now, if they say they started over and said, you want to what? what we're going to do is work on making Wine great, you know, make it mm-hmm. so that every single Windows application can run perfectly on Linux, like as if it was a mm-hmm. native application. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our own Linux distribution called Windows. You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. based on Linux kernel. It's just a Windows distro with a Windows desktop environment on top of it. And uh, and then Wine running around for any, you know, .exe files that you want to run around. Uh, that'd be very interesting. If Windows mm-hmm. became Linux, like actual Linux with just like a, like a Windows desktop environment on top of it, That'd be very interesting, even if it was controlled by Microsoft. And mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily saying I'm also all of a sudden going to trust Microsoft. Of course, I'm not going to trust Microsoft. No. I don't trust Canonical. You know, and, same, and, same. You yeah. know, I, I I don't trust Red Hat, Open Suse. They're they're corporations. They're meant to be making money. So there's mm-hmm. always the uh, whenever you're talking about a corporation, you always have to think. You know, that's their motivation. Why are they doing it? Because you know, wh- what are their motivations behind everything else? All, it all ties back to making cash, which is you know the way it's supposed to work. But whatever. Uh, so I'm not going to all, all of a sudden start saying you know I, I trust Microsoft. But if they went through and like, you know, the future of Windows is a Linux distribution uh, that has a perfected Wine emulation layer on top of it, so you can run your Windows applications. That'd be really really enticing. And I also think that that'd be really interesting for the rest of the Linux ecosystem because. Uh, the way Linux works is that if you don't want to use Windows distribution, you c- or you know, Microsoft's distribution, mm-hmm. you could use that emulation layer on you know Arch or Pop or whatever you wanted to do. That'd be also, really I th- cool. I th- I think if it became a Linux distro, that would completely change the way that we um, had to deal with stuff that didn't work, you know, on Linux and then worked on Windows. Because the only reason that they probably don't work on Linux is because the stuff to make it work is only made for Windows. Mm-hmm. And if it's if Windows become or was to become a Linux distro, then essentially all the drivers, everything, even if it's mm-hmm. proprietary, whatever, would still be packaged for Linux. Yeah. I mean, it's a nice thing to think about because if Microsoft did that, then, you know, like Adobe would go through and, you know, say, well, maybe we can start uh, developing for for Linux because it's you know it'd be better for these applications to be a native thing. We don't really want it to run in Wine, so whatever. I mean, they're already working on ARM-based stuff, so I mean it's possible that they could do that. But um, I think we should make this very clear: this is never going to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, like, well, see, some people will say there's no reason or there's no way that it could happen. It could happen, but the problem is, is there's no financial incentive whatsoever. Like they can at, at at least now they harvest your data and sell it to other companies. That's that is a way they make money. On top of you pay them cash, and right. and pay the the manufacturers of your hardware pay right. them cash. And, and it's even more than that. Companies pay them billions of dollars, right? So Microsoft doesn't give a jack shit about you and me. They care about every Fortune 500 company that uses all their products. That's mm-hmm. where they make their money on support and services and selling them licenses and stuff. Like that that's where they make their money. And that's the reason why this would never happen, right? There's mm-hmm. no way. Those corporations would never in a million years go through and change their systems to a completely new operating system. And we know that because Microsoft has tried over and over again to try to get rid of some of their legacy code by coming out with like S mode and, uh, you know, Windows RT and all this kind of, I mean, they tried over and over mm-hmm. again to tr- just try to push people into the future. And when I say people, I mean, companies you know Com- mm-hmm. companies are the reason why windows xp still has like 10 percent of the market uh, yeah you know yeah. windows 7 is like at 40 percent of the market or something like that it's it's I mean, it's done companies don't want to move off from this stuff and mm-hmm. uh there's no so there's no chance of them saying uh, oh look microsoft has this brand new thing it's based on linux of course we're going to use it wait a minute isn't linux that thing we use on the servers that nobody likes knows how to use just the people we pay you know tens of thousands of dollars each year to actually manage 
Yeah, yeah I'm not. I'm not doing that. No. Uh, I mean, and, <laughs> and and corporations. I mean, the way they think about it is is it's not even that it's just new. It's how much training are we going to have right, to do? Yeah. So yeah, like I I don't know. And also some I, I think there's a lot of people out there who don't really give it enough thought that like even if Windows became FOSS, there is absolutely no way that the bad things uh for for us in windows most people don't care but the telemetry and all that stuff there's no way it's going to go away it has to be there that that would be their only way of financially having any yeah. revenue coming from users see the thing is though uh, i just thought about this if windows became open source software and was licensed under like the gpl or one of the open source things Somebody could fork it and say, "You want to, this is Windows minus the shit," you know. Um, now, <laughs> good point. I mean, it, it, like I said, that's another interesting thing. Like, if if it was open source, somebody could fork it, and somebody mm-hmm. would fork it. You know what I mean? Like, like it, it would happen. Um, so, in that scenario, it could be possible that we had two different you know, pass for Windows. One would be the Microsoft way. One would be the open source, true open source way where somebody else was in control of that code. Um, mm-hmm. It'd be very interesting to see how that kind of thing would play out. Um, but I think that's why it'll never happen, too, is Microsoft knows that. Yeah, they, my, they know. Yeah, like, they're never going to give up that control. Like, that's, yeah. that, that's, I mean, we talked about it. It's all about the money, right? There's mm-hmm. no way... They're going to give up a multi-billion dollar part of their business. I mean, it's not Windows isn't as big as it used to be, like in terms of the making them make the money. Mm-hmm. But it's still a multi-billion dollar a year business, like mm-hmm. between licenses and support and all that stuff. They're if they went open source with it, they'd be giving that up or risking giving that up, and mm-hmm. it's just not going to happen. Because I mean, it's not going to happen now. I mean, it's possible. In 1991 or 1992 or whatever, whenever Bill Gates was in his basement coming up with ways of stealing DOS, um, you know, and making it whatever it is he made it, it's possible if at that point he was an open source guy and said, you know, I'm going to open source this to compete with Linux and Unix or whatever. At that Mm -hmm. point, it could have been possible because it would have had to been at the beginning. It's really hard for a project that's been open source and has been, or has been proprietary, I mean, Mm -hmm. for... 30 years to go through and become open source, especially when that project or that product has been so successful in terms of actually making money and continues to be successful. Now, if in a year or whatever, when Windows 10 flops, because we know it's going to flop, because that's just the way Microsoft works and it's TikTok, right? Um, if in like a year from now or whatever, nobody uses Windows anymore. Maybe maybe Microsoft open sources it because nobody uses it anymore. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like it's like those oh, games. Yeah. It's, like, it's like those games you see, like those like those ninety games or nineties games that were like really really popular, and then like thirty years later, the developer decides to open source them. The reason mm-hmm. why is because nobody plays them anymore. They don't care anymore. They're not making money mm-hmm. on it anymore. It no longer matters. God, that is, that is the sad truth. Like the only way that Windows becomes open source is by the time that it's irrelevant. Right. Nobody uses anymore. Um, yeah, so uh, the main question was, would you use Windows if it was open source? I, I, I think the answer is it doesn't matter because it's never going to happen, but if it were open source, I still think, I mean, your answer is no, my answer is no. Um, it, but more, I think the more interesting th- thing to look at is, because Microsoft has definitely embraced Linux more than it used to, right? I mean, they got WSL mm-hmm. now, they've open sourced like the calculator app. I'm like, woohoo, they've open sourced the calculator app. But I mean, that's a, it feels like a big deal because they've never open sourced anything really before that was part of Windows. Um, so it's really interesting to see where their interest in micro, in Linux leads. Um, and uh, like I've used WSL. Now granted, it's been over a year and it was still kind of beta-y at that point. Mm-hmm. But like, you know, this is at that point I was like, you know, this is kind of neat. It wouldn't drive me away from actually using Linux, but if, if you have to use Windows, but you also have to use Linux, WSL is a better version. It's great. You know, it's better mm-hmm. than having to dual boot because dual booting is dumb, mm-hmm. and I think yeah. every, everybody knows that dual booting is is absolutely a, the most horrible thing in the world. 
I absolutely hate the fact that I just have an extra Windows partition on my drive. Like dual booting is annoying. It's not, especially when you, when there's, a, now we live in a world where, I mean, running a virtual machine is not, like you, the odds that you'd have hardware that can't run a virtual machine, pretty low. Like yeah. virtual machine, stuff like that. Like, I don't know, dual booting for me, I've, I've never liked it. Um, especially back in the day when like Windows just didn't play nice with well, Linux. <laughs> Yeah, and I mean, don't get me wrong, there's some Linux distributions that just don't play nice with dual booting either. Arch does not mm-hmm. like to be installed last. Or no, oh, really? Arch doesn't like to be installed first, is what, what I mean. Oh. It, it, is if you ha- if Arch is very particular on who controls Grub. If it doesn't uh-huh. control Grub, uh, then it has problems. Now, obviously, that's a, uh, that was, I haven't dual booted in, <laughs> I don't know. Mm-hmm three or four years so it's possible at that point i was still very a noob person it was a problem for me but every mm-hmm. time i tried to install so i if i had arch installed first and then installed windows into another partition on the same drive i'd mm-hmm. always have problems with the arch linux partition breaking like it just wouldn't mm-hmm. log into because once windows installed after that it controls the bootloader mm-hmm. yep uh, so uh, it was very it was it was weird so uh, that was the main topic. Got anything else to say on this? No, I think we covered it. Yeah, um, I think it was a good combo. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> that whole Windows becoming a Linux distribution, it's gonna get your noggin thinking because it that has possibilities of being really mm-hmm. awesome. It's just too bad that's never gonna happen. Okay, so every mm-hmm. week, Tyler and I choose a uh, an app or something of the kind, and we call it apps of the week. But really, it's just picks of the week because it can really be pretty much anything. I just haven't changed the title in the Notion doc yet. So, uh, Tyler, what is your uh, pick of the week this week? Uh, for me, it is Vundle. And Vundle is a Vim plugin manager. I'm pretty sure. I mean, do I mean you use Vim? Do you use Vundle too? No, I use Vim plug. Okay. Um, so, well, good. So, Vundle is pretty popular. Um, not not everybody uses it. So, that's why I thought it would be good to just talk about it. Because I've been using just them i don't you run any plugins for the longest time but um because i'm working inside of unity and scripting a whole bunch in c sharp i want a like more fully featured ide to work in and vundle was just it surprised me how easy it was to get vundle working and just put in a plugin the only thing i will say if you are new to vim plugins new to vundle just know please Take your time and read the config because the config is very straightforward and it seems so e- and it, it is so easy that it can really throw you up because you have to actually after putting the plugin in the config file you have to do the command plugin install mm-hmm. and for me I <laughs> were like you, a you solid two that, minutes you missed that bit didn't you. <laughs> Yeah. For a solid two minutes, I was replacing the plugin, trying different methods of like using the plugin to get it installed. And then I saw the comment of just, you got to install. And I'm like, oh, what the heck? It's yeah, so gotta, easy. Um, there's not a lot of differences in terms of Vundle and Vimplug. They both do basically the same thing. Um, why I used to use Vundle, but now I use Vimplug. I don't remember why I switched. Um, <laughs> I think they're both basically exactly the same. They work like precisely the same i'm it's another one of those linux things like two versions of the exact same thing right um Mm -hmm. i'm sure i'm assuming that there's probably is some difference but i've never got into it but yeah um i mean it's like they even install the same like you do plug and install i just do plug install oh okay (laughs) yeah exactly the same um so yeah that's been plug and bundle they're really good uh i think i only have like seven plugins right now for vim uh, but that's about to change because I've been doing research, like I said at the beginning, to try to get to be a better uh, app for writing. So there's definitely going to be some more that I look into in terms of actually adding. But right now, most of the ones that I have are for um, like auto completion and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. um, yeah, and I don't that, do any s- s- coding, coding at all. So mm-hmm. well, uh, like t- for me, I only I, I only needed two plugins i'm sure i could optionally find some more plugins i thought was cool or like thought it were cool and play around with but for me nerd tree just so i have a file browser window there mm-hmm. perfect and then i can't remember what the plugins called but i use it it's uh, like scripting autocomplete so i can uh just 
choose like it comes with i think it comes with like three languages was already it like but coc is it conqueror of completion or something no oh, i can't remember what it was called but it came with like i know uh i know for a fact java was one of the program and that and python uh would already set up to autocomplete um and then i just i had to do like one extra step to get c sharp in there and then i mean i was like i was just surprised at how easy it was to get an ide set up or set up Vim as an IDE. Yeah. It's pretty simple. Yeah, Vim is great. I mean, seriously, mm-hmm. don't use Nano. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I, and I'm I, still I, unwilling to try Emacs. I don't know. I, everyone's told me I should at least give it a shot, but I'm still like, ah, not yet. It just do, does. Uh, Emacs is like KDE. It has too much shit in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's that's well, my opinion it, of it. It takes it takes over your entire like. Uh, as soon as you get into Emacs, from everyone that I've ever heard of, you get into Emacs, you like Emacs, and then the next thing you know, Emacs is your window manager. And I'm like, yeah. I don't, <laughs> I don't really want to go all that in. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't want to do my email and Emacs or file browsing and all that stuff. Mm. Like it's great that I can do that stuff, but I like this separate applications that I can. Yeah. Do, whatever. It's it's weird. Um, but you like what you like. All right. Anyway, so my pick of the week this week is called Authy. Now. I've been using Google Authenticator on my phone now for a while, but the problem with the Google Authenticator is that it's attached to the device, right? Mm-hmm. If this phone decides to die, I'm screwed. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and the great thing about Authy is that it's done through an account, so you can actually have it on multiple devices, and there is an, a Linux application for it, so you mm-hmm. can actually install it. Now, it is available only through the Snap, Snap Store. I don't know if there's... I'm assuming that it's also in the AUR. Everything is in the AUR, so I'm just, it seems to be a, a safe assumption that it's also there. Uh, but uh, I do have, <laughs> yeah, so completely off topic, but I, I do the top five Linux apps of the month every month, and this mm-hmm. month, three of them were snap packages, and one of them was a flat pack. I was like, uh, I don't want to install these things on my system. <laughs> <laughs> but I did, and the thing is, is Arco comes with both Snap and Flatpaks pre support pre installed, so I didn't have to really? do anything. I was just like, it was like Snap install this, Snap install that, and then FlatHub install whatever the hell FlatHub does because FlatHub's really? not nearly as easy in terms of syntax. But um, yeah, so the, it was both installed. It, was, it worked really well, so I could actually install Authy from the Snap Store, which I probably will. Mm-hmm. I haven't actually gone through and done this yet because. You have to go through and transfer every application, you know, one by one, and it's going to be a pain in the ass. But I'm going to use this because I'm just deathly afraid of this Android phone stopping to working, right? Because mm-hmm. this is a OnePlus 7T, I think. Um, and OnePlus used to be great in terms of, like, updates mm-hmm. and stuff like that, but just lately, their updates have been garbage. Like, I mean... Mm-hmm. Everything is, I mean, things going slow. It's running the the battery down. It's just so bad. Wait, uh, hold on. Did you say Samsung? No, no, One Plus. Okay, okay. Yeah, because um, I'm actually having the same issue. Uh, I updated my phone. I think it was yesterday, and now it's slow. Like, and I I have a Samsung Note t- Note Ultra twenty some five G BS. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Like. There's no reason for it to be slow. So my theory on the phones thing is that these companies are coming out with way too many devices, and they can't. They're, like Samsung has like forty different devices they have to, to support, maybe even more than that if you count like worldwide. I'm sure that it's probably more than that, right? Mm-hmm. No company in the world, no matter how big, can support that many devices and put out the same uh, an update every single month because they have to do an update every month. They have a security update every month. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> That's not great. That's the reason why Apple's so good because they, all their stuff is the same, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, like yeah. they just push out an update and it works for whatever devices they say it's going to work on. You know, mm-hmm. it works. Anyways, yeah. So, um, Authio was, was my pick, and that's the reason why I've been looking into it is because I'm I'm terrified that my phone is going to die from a, a, a stupid update that I don't really need. You know, mm-hmm. like like uh, I understand. I, like ten minutes ago, I was talking about how change is good. But when it comes to uh-huh. my phone, I don't want you to. I mean, oh, oh, don't get me wrong. I like the new Android 12 or whatever. It looks cool, uh, but I, unless it comes as the most stable thing in the world, I don't want to use it. I'd rather Exa- my, 
Exactly. I'd yes. rather my computer die. Like, I, I, like mm-hmm. I, the, those Linux problems I was having, those are those are great. I mean, I had a lot of fun trying to fix those damn things. <laughs> but if my phone dies, I'm lost. You know, mm-hmm. so I guess the thing has everything. My whole life, I mm-hmm. would die and, and cry. <laughs> and it's it's not even that. Like your your phone is one of those things where like if it goes down, there's a good chance that. Like that's a, a device where if there's an emergency, that's where someone's going to reach you. Yeah. Your co- ma- mainly your computer. Like it might be annoying that you can't get some work done, or you had something productive that you wanted to get done that day, and it some when something interferes with that. Like yeah, it's annoying and it's upsetting. But on your phone, it's a little bit like if if my phone is uh, is slow, or if I miss a phone call from my sister where like my mom's been in a horrible car wreck. Only because my phone is unstable. Oh, that's that's much different yeah, than yeah. just me having some problems with like trying to get Gentoo installed. It's a right. big difference. Yeah. So, so I think the moral of the story is use iPhone, right? <laughs> like, like, <laughs> no, that's not the moral. The moral, the moral of the story is don't put all of your eggs in one basket. Don't. Allow- I, I, I'm gonna. T- <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, there's definitely gonna be someone who skips through the video and ends up right on that part right there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Wait a minute, isn't this a Linux channel? <laughs> where where did I end up? <laughs> uh, uh, like, like I said, the moral of the story: don't let one device be the focus point of all of your data. And that is the way it is for me, like pretty much right now, because I use that Google Authenticator app, and if this phone dies i can't get into my bank i can't get into facebook i can't get into all these things that i use two factor for because they tell you you have to use the app-based authenticator or whatever because it's safer than sms Mm -hmm. um i'd be screwed right and Mm -hmm. i mean so we got two morals for the story don't upload your dot config file to github because that's (laughs) dumb and also don't tell people where you live on the podcast that's also dumb (laughs) And, and third don't don't put all your eggs in one basket. It's, it's a great, like, I don't know, some kind of proverb. Anyways, mm-hmm. so uh, that is it for us this week. <laughs> this is a, um, we just went over an hour, so um, I, I'm sure we probably can cut out the first 10 minutes of this. Um, we were we were bullshitting before we actually started. Um, so <laughs> coming up next week, I believe, yes, we're going to be talking about telemetry. So telemetry has been in the news a lot lately. With mm-hmm. Audacity and Ubuntu and all these distributions, they're all collecting data. And we thought that Linux isn't really supposed to do that, huh? But mm-hmm. it seems open source has come to the conclusion that it's okay to collect your data. Um, we'll see. We're going to be talking about that next week. That should be an interesting topic. So no. uh, that is it for us now. For now, we'll see you next week with that lovely topic. I'm sure that if you made it this far in the in the podcast, that you'll be happy to know that you should subscribe and you should like and you should comment and you should support us on patreon and if you already support us on patreon which these lovely people do devon marcus meglin donnie sven east coast web chris mitchell american camp thanks everybody for watching holy shit i need to take a breath we'll see you next week see ya